Thanks for watching. If you find my videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. Now for oxidation rule problems like this one, we need to make sure that we've memorized the general oxidation rule numbers shown right here. Now, one of the elements that has hard, fast rules is oxygen. As you can see right here, if oxygen, as well as any other element, is all by itself with zero charge, then its oxidation number is zero. That happens if you have molecular O2. Now, in other cases, if you have oxygen in a peroxide, such as H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, its oxidation number is negative one. And in pretty much all other cases, its oxidation number is negative two. Now, this example falls under the all other cases category, so oxygen's oxidation number here will be negative two. Now, what about hydrogen? Now, similar to oxygen and any other element, if hydrogen is all by itself, as in molecular H2, with zero charge, its oxidation number is zero. In any other case, as we see here, if it's bonded to metals, its oxidation number is negative one, and if it's bonded to nonmetals, it's positive one. Now, at a freshman general chemistry level, it's very rare to see hydrogen be bonded to metals, so most of the time it's gonna be positive one, and that turns out to be the case here. So how do we identify sulfur's oxidation number? Well, we have to back calculate it from all the other oxidation numbers, because there's not a hard, fast rule, always, 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 for sulfur. Now, how do we do that? Well, that takes us to this rule right here that says that when you add up all of the combined oxidation numbers for all of your atoms together, they should add up to equal the overall charge of your entire molecule. If you have a zero charge for your molecule, all of those oxidation numbers should add up to equal zero. If it's something else, they should add up to equal that something else. So we have to combine all of these here. In this case, we've got three oxygen atoms. So the total charge ebbing off of all three of those is negative two per oxygen times three, which comes to negative six. Now there's only one hydrogen atom here, so I can multiply its oxidation number slash charge by one and just get the exact same outcome, one. Now, is there a charge for this entire molecule? The answer is yes, it is an ion and it has a negative one charge indicated right there. So whatever number I put here for the sulfur, it has to be a number such that when added together with a plus one and negative six leaves behind negative one. Something plus one minus six equals negative one. What is that something? Yeah, it's positive four. And to go backwards to the sulfur, I'm going to divide it by the total number of sulfur atoms in this formula, which is of course just one. But this step is important because sometimes you're calculating out the oxidation number for a formula where you have more than one atom contributing to this overall calculated charge. That gives me a plus four right here as the oxidation number of my sulfur, which lines up with option C.